Welcome to Uncommonly More with Stacey Harris. I am Stacey Harris, the CEO and founder of Uncommonly More. Uncommonly More is a contract marketing department for female-owned brands ready to build a bigger impact. Our team supports leaders who want to market with integrity and share their message their way. With a focus on people first, the team supports clients by building strategies that support growth. Essentially, we do Uncommonly More. And here at the show, we're talking about podcasting and content marketing and digital marketing strategies and social media marketing and all sorts of other things you need to know now to make a bigger impact with your business, either on your own or with the support of a team. I think we should just get into it now though. So let's get started. Hey, 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 episode 517. I want to talk about your podcast team today. Because podcast teams can look really, really different. It can look like a one-person show, and it can be just the podcaster recording, editing, releasing, show notesing. All of the pieces are created and executed by the host. It could look like having several freelancers or contractors sort of each in their expertise. And so you as the host are recording and then you hand it off to an editor and then the editor gives that edited file back to you. And then you take that edited file and you give it to a copywriter who's handling show notes and social media posts for you. And then maybe you have a VA who goes in and uploads all of that to your website and to Libsyn or whoever you're hosting with and creates social graphics or schedules at all or whatever. And so that could be your podcast team, or you could be working with someone or an agency like ours where all of those pieces are handled by our team. So you have one point of contact. You have one production manager, we call them an an uncommonly more different agencies call them different things, but they're sort of like the project manager for your show and they're managing each individual bit. It could be any of those things. However, there are two things that I find can still cause some weirdness. And so those two things are what we're going to cover today. Because until you sort of really keep an eye on these two pieces, it's going to be really easy for you to fall into instances where you're less than thrilled with the team dynamic, with the process, with the production side of your podcast. You know, we've talked a little bit in the last few weeks about your purpose and knowing why you're recording your show. We've talked a little bit about process. That's what we talked about last week and and sort of finding your own rhythm. And this week, I really want to talk about the production side because generally speaking, your podcast issues are going to fall into one of those three buckets. And so we'll be talking more and more and more and more about this. But I want to be really, really clear that when things fall inside of this bucket, this production bucket, these are, in my opinion, the easiest problems to solve. And if you're working with a team or if you're working on your own on this, it often comes down to one of these two things. And when you can keep these in check, you can keep everything in check. And so that's really why I want to spend some time today. First things first. I want to talk about communications and expectations. I think this part of it is so, so, so critical. In fact, when we run into conversations with prospects or with clients who have had other teams before, oftentimes we have conversations where the biggest issue was a misalignment when it came to communication or poorly communicated expectations. And so I want to be really, 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 really clear that how you communicate with your team, how you get line of sight around what's happening will improve your overall process. And communications can look really, really different. Like this is something we'll talk about lots of times because there's lots of pieces to this conversation around communications and line of sight. 
We do it internally at Uncommonly More with dashboards. Uh, We use a project management tool called Monday. And inside of Monday, each and every single one of our clients have their very own dashboard. They get access to it. Any relevant people on their team get access to it. So oftentimes they're VAs or OBMs. Anyone in an operations role in their business is often generally going to need access as well as the client. And we 100% have clients who never, ever, ever, ever go in there and they'll, they leave ownership of that to that OBM, that VA, that operations person, which is cool. I'm unattached to who's in there as long as somebody has line of sight. And so in that case, the client has the communications with their right hand. Their right hand handles communications with us. And knowing that makes the whole thing run more smoothly. And their right hand or in the client directly can always go into Monday, ask episode specific questions to us, put their episode ideas, see where their show is in process, see what they have scheduled already, see what has been released, see stats for the first 30 days of all of the episodes we've produced for them in that dashboard in one place. And so that's sort of the key communications piece that I want you to look at having is where can you build in something that allows you to get all the information you need from your team in one place. So if you're managing multiple people, Having one dashboard in your project management software, regardless of whether that's Asana or Trello or whatever other tool it might be, it could be a Google Sheet, honestly. It 100% can be a Google Sheet. It doesn't need to be something particularly crazy fancy. There may be things that are harder for you to duplicate from what I mentioned, but whatever dashboard you need to create that gives you line of sight of where everything is. What's happening, what's happened, and what's going to happen. Knowing those things allows you to make better choices. Really, really, really helps set expectations, keep expectations really clear, and reduces the need to... I'm trying to find the nicest way possible to say this, but like poke at your team. For me, I like, I hate, and I I use that word, you know, with all possible meaning, having to feel like I'm micromanaging a situation. I also hate feeling micromanaged. And so when I can put things in place where I can just be really transparent and give clients everything they need, They're not going to try to micromanage my team and I don't have to micromanage the client. So you're really clearing up everything when you create some sort of landing spot to handle some of the little tiny communications. That way when there are big communications or when there's things that I really need to know about, I have a place where I can go and get that information. My clients and our team all have places where they can go to connect and say, hey, I want to make a change here. Hey, this is ready to go. Hey, I haven't seen this yet. Can anybody give me a line of sight of when it's going to when it's gonna happen? I see the due date is blah, blah, blah. Could we move it to X, Y, Z? Whatever the thing is that needs to happen. And so if you're currently running into a lot of frustration, I want you to look at creating some kind of central place to be. Some sort of landing spot. For us, it's this dashboard. For us, it's this place where we can have all of our communications and all of our expectations really transparently in one single place. I encourage you to create the same. This is something we grew into. This is something that even occasionally evolves and is customized for clients based on their needs but has probably been the biggest game changer in the course of the little over two years Uncommonly More has been around is these dashboards. So first and foremost, create some sort of landing spot and your communications will get better and you will get better results from your team. The second way to get better results from your podcast team and the second thing I want you to be looking at is really owning your role. I think it's 
something we all fall into from time to time when we have hired this out. So this is going to be less relevant if you're DIYing. Honestly, if you are DIYing your podcast, the most efficient thing you can do to get better results from you, dashboard, system, process. (laughs) And if that's unclear, we can talk about that in a call, a one-on-one call, book that on the site. But for those of you who are definitely investing on some level with some podcast team, whether it's one that looks like Uncommonly More, where you have more of an agency and you have one contact and they're handling everything in that one place, or if you have created your own podcast team with several contractors with your own business. Cool. Either one. Until you own the role you have in your show's production, in your show getting done, in the process of that, you're going to really, really struggle to get the best results from your team. Because the fact of the matter is, we are most commonly the person in the way. I say this as somebody who runs an agency that has built all of the systems and structures within that agency and use every single same thing. However, there are times, more frequently than I'd like to admit, where I'm in the way, where I'm recording last minute, where I'm changing my mind at a stage that is inconvenient for the team. It is really, 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 really easy for us to want to purchase our way out of a problem when we are most likely the cause. So if you're seeing that your turnaround time is really, really tight repeatedly, if you're seeing that it's consistently getting sort of jammed up or sticky at any point in the steps and in the the to-dos that are on the list, I want you to look at what in that spot are you responsible for. I'm also really, really terrible about approvals if I don't do them right away. If I don't do them when I see them, I forget they ever were sent to me and I don't get them approved. And so I have times where I go in and I look for approvals so that I don't have to always be responding right then so that my team knows, and this kind of goes into communications, when I'm going to do approving things. And frequently, I'll approve something right away. Or I'll hop in and I'll say, hey, I'm going to look at this X, Y, Z, follow up with me. And I empower them to be like, tap, 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 Stacy, did you do a thing? Because that's necessary. (laughs) It might be necessary. I truly believe that when we can take responsibility for our role in the process, we make better investments and we get better results. And so... Before you go to change your investment, before you go and change the team, make sure you're taking ownership of your role in the process. And here's the deal. If you're not sure if you're the problem, A, you probably are. And B, ask. Ask your team. This morning is a great example of this. We're busy right now. We've got launches we're handling and we've got our clients and we've onboarded a couple clients in the last couple of months and it's the beginning of the year and, you know, we're, we're grinding. There's just a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Not anything impossible, not anything on, you know, that can't be managed, but there's just a lot going on. And so one of the things I did this morning because I was feeling a little spinny. And so I went to Callie and said, What are the things you're waiting for me on? Tell me where I'm in the way. Tell me where I am the problem so that I can fix it. Because sometimes we don't know. And I didn't know if maybe I'd lost something. I didn't know if I was in the way somewhere. It turns out I wasn't. There's a couple podcast episodes that I needed to record. That's why I'm recording this now. But it's often hard for me to see where I'm the problem. Mostly because obviously I couldn't be the problem. I'm perfect and wonderful in every way, just like you. (laughs) And so I have to ask. And so I encourage you, if you're sitting there and you're listening to this and you're saying, 
there's no way I'm the problem. Go ask. And don't say, hey, am I the problem? But say, hey, where are you waiting for things? Where are you, you know, getting delayed because I need to get you something, approve something, deliver something, whatever. Follow up with something, whatever the thing may be. Ask. All right? These are the things that I want you to look at. I want you to look at your communications. I want you to look at, do you have one place where everybody can go to get everything that's happening? They can find out the little questions they need answers to. And I want you to look at where are you gumming up the process? Where are you in the way? I want you to take ownership of your role in your show, whatever that role may be, however big or small that role may be. All right, we're going to talk more about this in future episodes. So if you have questions specifically about working with a podcast team, whether it's mine or somebody else's, whether it's, you know, another agency, whether it's putting together your own show, whatever it is, hit my inbox, hit reply to one of the emails that go out. If you're not on the email list, let me know. We can fix that. Go to the website and fix that. DM me, whatever. I really, really want to hear from you because I... I think that there is a lot, a lot, a lot of frustration that can come from being with a misaligned team. And so I want to talk a lot about that or more about that this year. All right. All right. I will see you in our next episode. I want to take a second and say thank you. Thanks for listening to the show today. This is the start of a conversation. I want to hear from you. So come on over to Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever. If you're subscribed to the email, hit reply on your email. And say, hey, let me know how the show is going to manifest itself in actions and implementation for you. Because that's really why I do this. It's just so that you can do things. I'd also love to get more people listening to the show so that we can push out (laughs) the, the negative marketing messages happening in the world. And really override it with empowerment and people first focused marketing so that we can all be seeing the kind of marketing we want to be seeing. And the first part of that is, of course, doing the kind of marketing we want to be seeing. The second part of that is helping everybody else do it too. And so share the show. And of course, leave a rating and a review for the show. If you head over to ratethispod.com slash more, M-O-R-E, you will find an easy link to leave a rating and a review on a couple of different platforms, whatever platform you want to share it with. I would appreciate it. It really only takes a minute. Also, if you are interested in getting support from my team, sitting down and chatting with me, head over to uncommonlymore.com. That's where you'll find all the resources we talked about today, full transcript of this show and every show we've done before, and all the shows we do coming forward, right? It's a great way to stay connected. It's a great way to find out exactly how we can support you. So your next step, of course, is to head over to uncommonlymore.com, and I will see you next week.